So this video is intended for teachers in Ontario, Canada, who are interested in a tool or a grade book that would allow them to grade using uh, uh, levels, in, input via levels that are part of the Growing Success document, uh, or numbers, so numerical grades, or a combination of the levels and numerical grades. Uh, it's also intended for teachers who uh, are looking for something uh, where they can input grades via overall expectation, overall curriculum expectation, rather than just using uh, chapters or units. Uh, so in particular, it's my intended purpose is for, you, for using this in, in spiraling uh, curriculum content. Uh, so here, what I have here is a spreadsheet. This is my grade book. Uh, I modified a Google template to create this. And there are three sheets here. So the first one is overview. An overview gives you uh, uh, information about you know, the overall part of the overall data of the course, the, the inputs basically. So I you define your level grading system here. How big do you make each interval? So I mean, level four encompasses a mark between 80 and 100 percent. But if you want to further break it down, uh, you can, and you can define the intervals here. So anything highlighted with the uh, kind of red light, red background. Uh, are the values used in the calculations for the grades. So I can define my intervals here, and these will be used in the calculation of a student's grade. Uh, I also have a graph of the distribution, which, which gets automatically updated after you, as you enter grades, uh, that shows the distribution of the uh, class, the students in the class, and what levels uh, do, uh, what, what the frequencies of each levels, uh, will, where, where, where will you find your students? So. Uh, so when you see level four, this encompasses all the little level fours that I have here, the level four plus, level four plus plus, et cetera. Same for the level threes, level twos, and level ones. Uh, the spreadsheet also calculates class average and class median, and it tells you how many students are at each uh, interval or each achievement level uh, as well. Uh, there's also settings down here to indicate the weights of your uh, criteria, knowledge, thinking, communication, application. So depending on your course, you may have those weighted, weighted dif differently. And you can also change the uh, weight multipliers for each of your different kinds of assessments. So if you treat tests worth more than quizzes, uh, you can indicate uh, by how much here in this table. So anything that's highlighted in the red background, you can change, and they will be reflected uh, in the spreadsheet. Uh, the overall expectations are listed here, and a, a quick short code is used for each one so that you can um, uh, select them when you're entering grades. So uh, that's the overview. Uh, under, the under the next sheet here, grades, here's where you enter your grades. So I have a dummy list of mathematician names uh, to populate this class. You can enter in any numeric IDs you want, student numbers and whatnot, that's there for you. And here's where you enter the grades. So you can notice that I have levels and I have uh, numbers. So if you wanted to enter a mark for a level, so here I have test number one. Uh, I can indicate the overall expectation that falls under, so quadratic functions number one. The type is T, T for test. That's also indicated from the overview page. And category, so C stands for communication. Okay, And then I enter in uh, marks for each student. So uh, you'll notice, too, that if I enter, let's say, if I change Alan Turing's grade from level two to uh, level uh, four plus, that's the color of the cell changes, right? So uh, the green colors tend to be the you know the really good ones, you know, level three, level four. And then uh, as you go down to yellow and then red, you're going into level two and level one territory. So you have a nice visual interpretation of how a student is progressing as you go from, uh, from column to column and down a, a student's row. Uh, okay, and so then these levels do get converted to uh, numbers which are used in the calculation of the student's average. If you want to enter in points, you can as well. So you just indicate in this row here how many points is your evaluation out of. So if it's out of 100, you indicate that here, and then you enter in the numeric marks here. Same thing if it was out of 5, then you can do that here, out of 5, and then enter in the numerics, numeric marks here. There's a row here that will indicate the average for the, for the class for each assessment. Um, and even, and all those numbers that you enter will also be reflected in your student's average. And even the color codes uh, for the cells apply to numeric marks as well. So if I enter in a, we look at here, let's say this, this column here, test number three, a mark out of 25, well, 23 out of 25 is a, a mark in the level four range. But if I change that to, let's say, 10 out of 25, 
Well, it's a very poor mark, and you'll see the color gets changed as well to reflect that. Um, and that and that is the the great entering portion of this. Uh, so moving on to the individual student record. So when it comes time to see your students individually, or you want to present your students with their progress in the class, this sheet will give you a lot of detailed information for each student. So there's a drop down box that will let you select your student. Uh, so again, I'll, I'll go back to Alan Turing here, since he's the first one on our list. So it will show all of Alan Turing's grades uh, that have been entered. They will convert all the numeric marks into percentages. Uh, and then you'll it'll list the class averages right above it so you can compare as well. And then right below that, you'll see a chart that indicates the categories, knowledge, thinking, communication, application, and it tracks uh, how well is this student doing in, the, in each particular criteria. So you can target which ones need to be worked on. So maybe this student needs more uh, work on basic knowledge and understanding of concepts but they're doing much better in communication. So you can see that from this visual, uh, this graph right here. And then down below is a filtered reorganization of all the grades by curriculum uh, expectation, overall expectation. So because if you look at this list, it's not divided by overall expectation. But if I wanted to know if he was meeting certain expectations, doing well in certain expectations, and which one he's not, I can look at this visual because you'll notice that I have well, quadratic functions one, quadratic functions two, with the overall expectations listed here. And for each overall expectation down the row, you can see all the grades that are associated with that one. So all, these are all the grades associated with quadratic functions one, QF1. And you can see here at QF3, well, the evaluations associated with QF3 are all very poor. Okay, you'll notice by color as well, level ones. So you can quickly identify which overall expectation needs some work, especially if you're spiraling curriculum throughout the semester. You are repeating overall expectations uh, every single month, and you can you can quickly see the trend whether it's improving or uh, or they're worsening. They're not getting the concept, or it's you know it's clearly in, shown here uh, visually. And as another way to calculate a student's mark, so if you don't like the numeric averages here, and you you're trying to find some way to to follow the, the you know the student success, the growing success document where they say you should calculate a mark based on their most consistent and most uh, recent mark. So as you go down the list, you'll notice, well, okay, as you, if you treat the way you enter them as the, the most recent mark, then on the far right side will be the more recent entries. But what I also do is a mode calculation. So the most common uh, value here appears here in this blue square. So it, uh, it looks at the, the color of the squares. You see, if I, if I count more level fours, Okay, it doesn't matter whether it's plus plus or minus or 99 or 95. If they're in the level four range, it counts that and it indicates, well, level four is the most common uh, level in this expectation. So this expectation uh, could be given a level four. Whereas if you look at quadratic functions three, well, there are all level ones here. So the most common one is level one. And in other sections, well, you have two level fours and one level three, but the most common one is level four. So it's, it's a level four. And it does that for every single overall expectation. This one's blank because there's no marks entered for SF3. But here you have a list of all the modal marks. And from that, you can calculate uh, an average, or you can look at the mode of these marks. So if you look at the mode of these marks, it's level four. There's level four repeats most often. And that's calculated here in the purple uh, cell. Uh, so you don't have to give this as a mark. I mean, it's still another range. Some, it's a mark you have to determine. But it's another piece of information that helps you make a more informed uh, judgment of a student's uh, mark. You can also compare this to Alan Turing's actual calculated average. His average was 72. Uh, so that, again, that 72 was brought down by the fact that he was weak in one of the overall expectations, and a little bit in, in this one here too. But if you take into consideration everything else, while well, he's doing fantastic level three, level four, and these in these expectations over here, and these four expectations, you can kind of make adjustments to the student's mark based on your professional judgment. So it's another tool that um, may be useful, interesting, or maybe you may want to try out. Uh, once you do and you have any feedback, uh, let me know.